Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, your look at news from the City of Kansas City, Missouri. The Water Services Department is launching improvements to its customer service, including new online and mobile pay options. To complete this installation, the Water Services Call Center, Lobby, Billing Center and online payment portals will all be closed August 14th through the 17th. Customers will still be able to contact Water Services Dispatch Center during this time to report service problems or water outages. Now keep in mind that late fees or penalties will not be applied to accounts whose payment due date falls on one of those days that customer service is closed. For additional information and updates on this process, visit kcwaterservices.org slash improvements. Five blighted houses were demolished this week thanks to crews from Kissick Construction. The demolition reduced the normal cost of removing these homes to the city by nearly 80 percent. The donation of equipment, time and supplies to tear down these dangerous buildings helps the Marlboro neighborhood by maximizing city funding to remove additional buildings within targeted neighborhoods. The city's investment in this area also includes the nationally recognized green infrastructure program to reduce stormwater runoff. Citywide PIAC hearings begin August 14th and continue through August 20th. Be sure to check our website at kcmo.gov slash PIAC for more information or watch the hearings on Channel 2 on Time Warner Cable or Channel 142 on Google Fiber. The deadline date to submit a request for PIAC is August 31st. PIAC request forms are available at the hearings online at kcmo.gov or call the Capital Improvements Program at 816-513-2826. You can also go to kcmo.gov and search PIAC, that's P-I-A-C. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Working with data generally and visualizing data is about taking something that's a number and that comes out of this type of kind of rigid analytic framework and using it to demonstrate a point or a story or something that can be used in decision making. And so we started brainstorming about what would that look like for Kansas City? How could we make sure that our citizens are interpreting the data and, and how can we tell better data stories? That just snowballed into this idea of like, let's put out a call for artists, let's bring in professionals, let's get sponsors like Socrata, and, and let's make it happen in a very professional way out there in the community. And we'd love to do it in a way that uses the data and, and turns it into artwork. We wanted the artists to reimagine the data, and we have got a completely different across the board. I mean, everything from wearable art to 3D art to the traditional visual art, it's all represented in this exhibit. To me, data is circuit boards. You know, through circuit boards, we go city to city, business to business, people to people. And I thought, as a visual artist, how do I make it simple for the people? There's something really um, honorable and beautiful about the, the city making it so transparent that you can actually put it out in front of anybody. Anyone can go on to the Kansas City website and they can click through all the way down to the raw data that supports even the graphs. I just really hope that what people get out of my piece in general is an overall feeling of both what's beautiful and what's uncomfortable about the things that we love and hate about the city we live in and what that can say about what we need to fix. Having art that explicitly moves people toward ideas and problems and issues facing our community, I kind of think the sky's the limit. You could have people go through this and see perspectives on city issues that they have never encountered before and wouldn't encounter in another venue. These are people who would not come to a city hall meeting or a budget hearing, but now they're in an art gallery and then suddenly they're staring at this art on the wall and they're engaging with the city and talking about data and city statistics in a way that they never would have otherwise. That's what you want with community engagement, is that you get people involved who haven't been involved. I'm a numbers guy. I came up through the organization, and to see numbers and how we manage this organization uh, uh, parlayed into new and different ways to look at it uh, and, and interpret it through a different set of lens is just simply astounding. I think this is the coolest thing ever. 
This exhibit is focused on data, which is extremely important to us because we use data every single day to make decisions and to set policy in this city. Anyone can see and use our data. All you have to do is go to our open data catalog on the city's website. It's open to everybody, it's transparent, and we encourage the public to use the data. Socrata is the company that created the software to power our open data catalog. What we want the driving lesson here to be is that people walk away from this, A, thinking that Kansas City is a creative and innovative city, and also that Kansas City really does look at hard data and real numbers to make sure that they're making smart decisions on behalf of the taxpayers. It's just incredible. I think we anticipated that there would be people coming and going and that there would you know, be some activity, but nothing like this. This encapsulates to me all the work that we've done that we're doing this aspirational type event to say let's step completely outside everything we've done and look at data in a completely different way. I think that's where we are right now as an office and as a city. We can't simply throw kids out of places, we have to give them a place to go. And that's why we got started with our summer programming with Club KC, uh, with the night kicks, night hoops, night, night nets. And what, let me tell you what happens during the summer months as a direct result of those programs that we have. Um, in the first year that we started, right after the shooting incident on the plaza, in that first year, juvenile crime, both victims and perpetrators went down 16% okay, during those times. In the second year, it went down 18%. That tells me something. Occupied minds and kids and bodies will do something more productive than get into trouble. If they're not occupied, then you're going to find a bunch that get into trouble. So give them something to do. The next thing that we're trying to do is we really, really, really need jobs. The city hires a lot of kids during the summertime. We had, I think we hired about 100 last year, give or take, but we had 350 show up for the interviews. What happens to the 250 we couldn't hire? What are they doing? It used to be when I was growing up, you had a summer job. If you didn't have a summer job, you don't come home. I mean, that's just the way it was. Because if you went home and mom was there, then you wish you had had a summer job so you wouldn't have to be there. There's 37 million of you out today. 37 million kids in about 3.5 million different places. All of you hanging out with your parents. Any day that you get to hang out with your parents in their place of employment is good because they get to come hang out with you at school sometimes, right? I met all the council, councilmen and women. Coolest thing I saw today was the vault. And so it was pretty cool because we got to step in and she showed us the money. Uh, so thank you all for being here this morning to help us kick off uh, what I believe will be another successful uh, summer of Mayor's Night's programs. The goal at the very beginning has always been to give our young people a safe place to go, safe place to have fun, some place where it was appropriate for them to be. Uh, when we are seeing a 12-week attendance number hitting uh, 12,000 mark, we know that what we provided was needed and wanted. Uh, those numbers tell us that 2013 was an absolute success, and we have every reason to believe that 2014 is going to be even better. This is the third Rock the Block. 
and it's getting bigger and better every year. And the reason it's getting bigger and better every year is because we have some great partners. But before I talk about them, I want to talk about you. And I want to talk about the kids in this city. The over 10,000 kids that have participated in basketball, volleyball, soccer, Club KC, Arts Tech, going to movies at the library this summer. Every one of them had a good time. They had a safe place to go and a safe place to be and they got to hang out with their friends, which is what every young person wants to do. I did when I was growing up. You did when you were growing up. That's what we want to do. They get to do it too. Because even though there are places that, they, that they're not necessarily always wanted to be, they're wanted to be at our stuff every single night during the summer on Fridays and Saturdays. So thanks to all of them that participated, and thanks to all of you for participating. Thanks a lot, folks. The American Jazz Museum features exciting interactive experiences and celebrates the historical roots of Kansas City Jazz right where it all took place on the corner of 18th and Vine. A priceless saxophone once played by the Yardbird himself, Charlie Parker, is there as well. And speaking of Parker, the second annual Charlie Parker Celebration will take place August 20th through the 29th. It honors Kansas City's favorite son with performances at venues all across KC. For more information, visit AmericanJazzMuseum.org. To view this program again or other Channel 2 videos, go to KCMO.gov and search for Channel 2. That page has a link to our YouTube channel as well as a Channel 2 program guide. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.